What's up, everybody? We back. R2C2, another week. We still out here on location. Got my brother Edwin Jackson with me. And our guest today is the Cy Young Award winner, 2021, Corbin Burns. What's up, bro? Appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. This is this is awesome. Thanks for coming, man. to get into it. <laughs> yes. We got a pitchers meeting, man. There you go. How's That's it been it. going? It's good. It's good. It's a, it's a little bit different spring. It's a... Uh, it seems rushed, obviously coming off of everything, but uh, it's one of those things. Hey, when the when the lights turn on, you gotta you gotta be ready to go. Yeah, are are you a guy that throws all off season? Like, do you stay, I guess, stay ready, or or like, what's your process during the off season? Yeah, so so typically, I'll I'll take two or three weeks to kind of shut everything down, kind of relax, spend time with the family, kind of reflect on the season. But then, yeah, it's it's right back into it, kind of build it up, and and uh, this year was was different. You know, we're you know, having to throw live a bunch of live BPs and everything on, on our own. It's it's one of those things. Like typically, typically I don't throw live till we get into get into camp, yeah. throw a couple of bullpens, and then go into camp ready to go. But you know, we kind of through the kind of through the grapevine, through the talks on the side, we knew we we're going to come in ready to throw two or three innings when we got into it. So it was like, like shit, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to set some stuff up. We're gonna have to get kind of get going to it. So it's different, but uh, yeah, it was, it was still still fun off season. Now, where where are you in the off season? Are, are you out here? You here? So yeah. do you go to the facility? And, usually, usually, I'll train at the facility. But this um, year you couldn't, right? This year, so. this year couldn't. So this year I, I had to you know set up the set up the home gym, set up the net on the side of the house, <laughs> and, and kind, of, kind of go old school with it. But uh, it was fun. It's you know it's able to spend more time at home, and um, you know wife was pretty pregnant at that point, so it was good. That's awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. That seemed to be the story of everybody, man. Everybody had to kind of do something different this year. So it's definitely going to be interesting to watch, man. But even you sitting here is a privilege for me, man. Like I say, regardless of the time I have watching you pitch, man, that was dope, bro. I can't lie, man. You done some you done some shit that I'm like, man, how the hell did he do that? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Especially with the 57 strikeouts, no walks. I'm like, bro, how? Yeah. I'm like, I can go up there and t- throw it down the middle and it ain't going down the middle and it might walk somebody. But <laughs> no, nah, it's been dope. It's been fun to watch you, man. And, and it's been dope, you know what I'm saying, to see you come out and emerge as one of the best pitchers in the league. So that's been, you know, congrats on that. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys having me. I mean, shit. Cy Young, 16, what, 16, 17 years? 17 seasons. 17? So, I mean, 17 seasons. I mean, that's, that, and that in itself is, is impressive. So. When you're going through, like, the 57 walks, no, uh, 57 strikeouts, no walks, <laughs> Do you do you know that? Like, do you know that when you're going through it? I mean, obviously you hear it, but like, like, what's your thought process going into games? It's like, is it just to like get contact, or are you like, I'm not, I'm going into games not to walk people? No. So my my goal the last couple of years is is to go in and not get beat. You know, don't beat myself. Mm-hmm. Don't not walk guys. Don't hit guys. Don't put guys on. And for me, it was that's kind of been the goal is minimize the free passes, make them beat me, make them hit you know, hit the balls in the gap, make them make them you know manufacture their own runs. Don't give them to them. And, and I think it was probably the third or fourth start when I finally started to kind of hear like, hey, you've you've punched out thirty without walking a guy. You've punched out thirty five now without walking a guy. And then it's like then it's everywhere. Yeah. Then every 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 media guy you come across is like, hey, you know, so you're at forty now. You, so, but you know, I, I got a lot of help along the way. You know, the three O's and guys are swinging at. 3-0 pitches and grinding out. You're like, hey, thanks. Or, <laughs> three, two count. Throw a cutter in the dirt, and the guy punches himself out. So it's like, hey, you know, it's, yeah, obviously that for a streak like that, you gotta have a lot of, a lot of luck on uh, involved in along the way. Yeah, but it's dope though, man. Because you in situ- as a pitcher, you always in situations. That mean that obviously you putting yourself in situations where you can win. Mm-hmm. You got great shit. You can get away with some stuff that maybe other people can't get away. But the part to me, the part for me that make it crazy is everybody in a situation where you like. I need to walk this dude to put him on first to get this out. <laughs> so you ain't you ain't in them crazy situations. And if you are in the situation, you're pitching your way out of it. So that speaks volume on his own right there, just to see you get into situations where a dude can hit you facing a four hitter or a five hitter and you might have somebody behind him. Did you be like, damn, this is a better, this is a better matchup with the account and you still going at him and getting him out? That's dope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just yeah, you have certain situations, like you say, you you get Second and third, you know, one out, and it's like, hey, you got the pitcher coming up next. You know, you can kind of throw around a guy, and you know, I was I was fortunate enough that stuff was good enough early on that it was like, you know, let's try to get this punch out, and then you mm-hmm. get the pitcher to get out of it. So, but yeah, like I say, it's just it's just one of those things that a lot of luck involved, a lot of, a lot of help, you know, behind the plate, Omar calling games and infield. Yeah. So, it was, it, but it was fun. That's not luck. That's just being young and good. <laughs> like as you get older, you will start working around some people. But when I got to the National League, I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna get this guy and I'm gonna get the pitcher out. Right. This is gonna be an easy inning. You know what I'm right. saying? So yeah. it's just it's just the way you attack guys, and you know, you'll evolve into, you know, uh, maybe that thought process, maybe not. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just. It, it just depends on, you know, how, how it goes, you know, down the stretch. I know um, you're super into, like, the mental side of the mm-hmm. game. 
Um, like, how did that come about? Were you always like that, or was it just when you got to the big leagues? No, nah, so it, was, it wasn't until until I got my you know, face kicked in in 2019. Um, yeah, it's for for me, I was always the guy that I had good raw stuff come through college, come through the minor leagues that just kind of go out there and hey, these guys can't really hit if I throw a slider and kind of throw a fastball by a guy. And so when I got to the big leagues, all of a sudden, in 18, as a reliever, same kind of thing. Just mm-hmm. throw the piss out of the fastball, throw some sliders in the dirt, and guys get themselves out. And then 19, got in the rotation, all of a sudden, you've seen guys three or four times in the lineup that, hey, they start they start taking the slider, they start jumping on these heaters, and all of a sudden, like, I was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing out here. And so I got to the point that, of, like, I know I got the stuff, like, what am I missing? And I had a um, couple of my agents like, hey, if you, you want to come talk to this mental performance coach? That actually, he lives out here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, and, you know, I, I need something. I need something to get me over the, you know, over the edge, and, and I, I know the stuff's there. And um, so when I started working with him, it was basically just taking every, taking all the stress out of the game. And you get on the mound, you're trying to think through things, and it was – I just was – became so prepared going into starts and had routines going into it that when I got out there, you know, my main focus, hey, cutter, execute this pitch down and away. Like it was just executing pitches and it was back having fun again. It was, you know, 2019 was one of those, the most stressful years of my life. And mm-hmm. I was 25 years old. Like, it <laughs> yeah. should be fun playing. And it was stressful. Yeah. And, you know, was getting married that off season, so my my fiance is going through it, family is going through it. It's just like, this, this is not fun. This sucks. <laughs> yeah. So I got to figure something out. And then I'll, you know, now it's, it's fun again. It's out yeah. there. You know, we're pitching, having fun, executing pitches, trying to make guys look dumb. Yeah, the fact that you get into the mental part that young, and I know, I mean, the game is not necessarily calling you young, but for me, to get in the mental part of, in the 20s, that's young because it, I didn't get into the mental part of the game. Even after getting my ass kicked, I still didn't get in the mental <laughs> part of the game. I work harder, and, and that necessarily wasn't the right approach because I did, took a different approach. But if it was one thing that I wish I did or wish I had done differently, it would have been buy into the mental part of the game at a younger age because mm-hmm. I was like you. I was raw. I had the stuff. Um, and the mental part is what I was lacking, you know. But I learned it at a, a later age. And for you to you learn it at a younger age, man, that says a lot. It's dope because you got to buy into it. And it's hard to buy into somebody else telling you how to go play a game mm-hmm. that they never played a game or somebody telling you how to feel that don't know how you feel yeah. because that's how I feel. This dude don't know how I feel when in reality, they didn't talk to a thousand of me's, you know? <laughs> but I didn't, I couldn't comprehend that until I got older. So for you to take that approach and, you know, to let go and be like, I need help, that yeah. speaks who you are. And that's why you've had the success you've had. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that we've talked about, you know, we got Andrew McCutcheon now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the things he talked about is, you know, the grind through this 162 game season is at some point, you're not gonna, things aren't gonna go your way. Yeah. And to be able to be open and say, hey, you know, open to you know, open to criticism and hey, let's try this, try this. It's a you know, it's a team game. We got 26 guys now. It's yeah. 162 games. You can't do it by yourself. So that was for for me in 2019, knowing like, hey, I've got the stuff, you know, what what, what do I gotta do? Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm open to anything. I, I wanna stay <laughs> I, I wanna stay in the big leagues and I ain't gonna do it with what I'm doing hey, now. Nah, so it took a lot. That's a perfect way to think. And you know, I, I heard you um on a Zoom, because, you know, obviously my wife's with CAA, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. he did a Zoom, um, and my son was listening to him speak, and he said something perfectly that I always tell my son is that, like, during the week or during your day, whatever your position player or, or starter, like, get your routine down. Like, get your stuff in. Make sure you do you check everything off the list so that when you get out there, the result don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just feel good about how you prepare for the game, whether it's day-to-day or your week as a starter. If you check off all those boxes, now you're just out there, like you say, you de- execute a cutter down on the way. For me, execute a slider back door. You know what I'm saying? I, the umpire don't call it a strike. Ain't shit I can do about that. I'm just going to execute the next pitch. Yeah. So, like, having the chance to, you know, tell kids that and have kids understand that at a young age is huge, yeah. man. And um, I think you just, like, right on the right track with, with everything that you're thinking about. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's kind of, you know, even young guys now in the clubhouse in spring training, guys come talk to me like, hey, like, like, what, like, what do you, like how do you break down your starts? Because that's the biggest thing everyone asks me now is, like, like, do you care that you gave up three runs and six six innings and punched out twelve? Like, no, that that doesn't really matter to me. Mm-hmm. For me, it's you. Know, how did I execute pitches that day? Was my cutter horse shit? Was the slider good? What, what do I got to do? So now, when I go look at film and break down film, which we have tons of access to now, it's like, mm-hmm. hey, the cutter we only executed fifty percent of the cutters right through. Like, it's a pitch that I throw almost sixty percent of the time. Like, yeah, you're not gonna have good numbers at the end of the day if you're only executing half the cutters that you throw. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's for me. It's just the easiest way to break things down. You're not looking at, hey, you're not trying to go six, seven, punch out 12, not give up. It's like, no, go out and do what you do. And if your stuff's there and you're you're prepared and you're executing pitches, it's going to come out good in the end. Yeah. yeah. 
by the time you get to the game, that's the fun part. The game is the easy part. Absolutely. And it's not the easy part, but it's the easy part. Like you say, you put in all the work already to make the game be able to be the easy part. Yeah, you, you don't want to be out there grinding for 32 Woo! starts a season. <laughs> right. you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. it's, you may only get to do this for 10 years. Yeah. And, and it would be multiple seasons, you know, 17 seasons like, like yeah. you're lucky enough to do. If, yeah. if I get to that point, great. But, you know, if if, if I got to go out there and can only have fun for 10 more years at 30 starts, like, yeah. that, that, ain't, that ain't that long of a time. That's not a long <laughs> time, man. It's not at it all. Ain't, it nah. ain't at all. Nah, it's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, you know, like you said, it's a perfect way just to, to break it down and, um, the older you get, the more the, the mental side will be, you know, you'll have to lean on that a little more. But the, the earlier you can get it, I mean, it's it's awesome. Um, let's let's switch gears a little bit to the Brewers organization. Yeah. Got a chance to play there. Some great people. Um, you love it? How do you like it? You like the city? I do. I I love it there. You know, my, my, my wife and I get asked the question all the time, being from, you know, California. We're both grew up, grew up there. We live here now. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, the Midwest, is a, it's a completely different feel. Mm-hmm. You know, the people there are, are, are awesome. They, everyone wants nothing but the best for you. They're great people. You walk into a store, and it's it's not like everyone's like, oh, like, oh, my God, you're, you're Corbin Burns. Like, no, hey, it's like, hey, how you doing? Like, like people don't <laughs> care that you're, yeah. like, you're, you're a baseball player playing for the Brewers. It's awesome. And so, um, you know, as far as fan base goes, I mean, we, we pack the crowd. Obviously, I've been fortunate enough to be on. You know, every year I've been mm-hmm. up, been in the postseason, so we get get huge draws anyway. But um, I mean, people, people come, tailgate people, before the games. We showed up mean, at the park. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's forty degrees outside, and they're out there drinking beer. And it's like we got a one o'clock game. They're getting there at eight a.m. It's like you guys are crazy. I'm still trying to sleep. Like, but, <laughs> that stadium uh, get loud. Oh, that stadium man. get loud. Yeah, it does. You, they close up that roof and close man. the panels. It, it's loud in there. It's, it's so it's much fun to play there. And then, like you said, the people are just so right. cool. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they just really care about you in a way like. Seem like other fans don't. They make you, you know feel at home. Yeah, they make they you do. feel at home. No, it is, and it makes it makes it easy to to go back there every year and and play in front of them. And yeah. I mean, you, you a lot of guys are excited to go on road trips to certain cities. Like, no, we're 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 happy to go home and play. Like, right. we, we get big crowds. We get, you know, it's it's a playoff atmosphere in yeah. you know middle of April. It's it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's that home field advantage too. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? absolutely. It's that home field Absolutely. Advantage. That's dope. How, I got a question. How anal? How anal are you in your um, routine? I've I've gotten more crazy about it um, <laughs> <laughs> last year. Um, so with in in eighteen, being a reliever, like it's it's tough to stay on a consistent routine. You don't right. know when you're pitching. You don't when don't know when to get workouts in. You don't know when to go in the in the training room get some you know some soft tissue work done. Um, so that that was tough for me. Um, Nineteen, shit, bounce between big leagues, triple A bullpen rotation. Yeah. That was that was even tougher for me for for. Um, you know, a routine standpoint. So then, 2020 is kind of the first year. Is like, hey, I've, I've, I know I'm pitching every five days. Okay. So I can yeah. kind of lock things in. And right. so now that I've, I've gotten to the point now that, yeah, when I come in, it's like, hey, I've got, I've got, I got stuff to do. You know, I got my, my day is so structured out now. From the minute I get there at 12:30 to a seven o'clock start, like I've got. I got to get this done, get this done, get this done. I got 30 minutes to go eat and kind of, you know, socialize and, and have some fun. And I tell you, then I got to get back and get work done. Otherwise, it'll be nine o'clock before before I can come up for air. And yeah. it's like, gosh, we're, we're going to be in the fifth inning of the game. So I got <laughs> to make sure I get stuff done so I can get out there and, you know, cheer it's on the boys. The team, so, yeah. Um, yeah, this, the last year is, it's kind of been, been even, you know, more and more anal about it. And that's, but. Yeah, you know, if I if I want to go out there and have success, it's something I got to do. Absolutely. Do How were you about your routine, man? I wish I was better, bro. I mean, I guess I I somewhat had a routine, but it wasn't a formulated routine. You know what I'm saying? As I, until I got older, and people kept throwing that routine where what's your routine? And I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't have a routine. <laughs> I, mean, I come to the field. I come to the field. And I guess I do some of the same shit the same, but I don't have a specific routine. I had to learn that, bro. I had yeah. to learn it. I mean, it wasn't hard for me to do. But I just had to learn how to come in. I mean, I worked out. I did my workouts. They didn't have to come find me to work out. So I was right. in the gym. But most of my routine, I feel like I needed it on the mental part. Physical part, I was dog. I was in, I was in top physical shape. I was probably in shape more than some of the position players. My mm-hmm. my routine needed to come mentally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest part that I needed. The physical aspect was there. And I had to learn that. It was tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I was the opposite because the Indians were really – like serious and into the mental part of the game. Mm-hmm. We had a strength, we had a mental coach like in rookie ball. Mm-hmm. So I was just used to like that part of it and like learning, you know, how to control my breathing and different things out on the mound. Mm-hmm. Like they always had to come get me to work out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta just find my ass. <laughs> Quincy, see, see. We don't know. Especially nah. when I was younger. Nah. When I, when I, as uh, I got older, when I got to the Yankees, I mean, it, like honestly, the second half of my uh, Indians career, like the year, I, the, the two years before I won the Cy Young, is when I really started like mm-hmm. getting dialing in my like physical routine and you know not so much my eating, but like working out and making sure that I was. Mm-hmm. Strong enough to go out there and pitch, right. you know, 30 starts, 32 starts, whatever it was. But, yeah, I mean, it took me a while to dial in physically. Um, it was more like my mental side. I could, you know, think my way through a game early. I, You know, I could figure shit out. Right. But it was just getting that routine see, as far see, as, like, I think physically. I, need, I think I needed to – I would have been better hearing it from another player mm-hmm. about the mental part. Because if I could hear it from the mental coach, I'm like – Man, this dude don't know me. That was, <laughs> yeah. That's just how young-minded yeah. I was. I'm like, man, he don't know me. He can't tell me shit that's going to help me on the field. But if I would have heard it from a player, like, hey, bro, get on this mental part early. Like, get on this mental part. I think I would have I, I would have received the information a whole lot differently. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's definitely starting to be part of the game now, too, because I have guys from other teams coming up and asking, like, hey, you know, what's how do you break down starts? Like, that's always the my my execution stuff that I go over. Like, that's the most talked about whenever I talk to guys in the outfield and BP or whatever. Hey, like, take me through this. Like, mm-hmm. I got young guys now with with the Brewers. Like, hey, like, can you can you take me through some stuff? Like, some of your routines, just the like you say, just the knowledge, knowing mm-hmm. that coming from another player, it's going to sink in more and have more of an effect than coming from you know a staff member. Like, hey, maybe Absolutely. we should try this. That's one of the things. It's just you know players helping players. Yeah. yeah. Do you know who was big for me that I never played with was Kurt Schilling. Mm-hmm. Like, he would always like if I seen him in the outfield or. Even, you know, if I didn't see him in the outfield, if it wasn't any BP, he would come get me. And, like, we would meet in the dugout or behind home plate, and he would just talk to me about how I was feeling, what I did the last week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what did you do the last week, like, to get better? And, like, all these different things. So I was always, you know, trying to figure out Mentally, how to get better? It was just that that <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to give up my big game class. I'm not ready. <laughs> nah, that's that's dope. Man. That's dope. Yeah, I like man. that message though, man. I feel like these kids, the visualization part of the game, getting that to these kids now. I feel like the the generation is buying into it way quicker yeah. than we did. Yeah, I mean, even just like you know, you're doing those zooms with with the kids that are in high school now, like they're trying to figure out every edge, numbers, mentally, everything to figure out how to get better. I mean, you got to now. I mean, shit, shit. some of these <laughs> kids in high school are throwing 100 in high yeah. school. I, I look back and, and like, I was like, how hard did I throw in high school? Like, going back and looking at stuff, I was like, 88? Yeah. Like, that's what... I wouldn't even been looked at. Like, I wasn't looked at in high school at that point. But in college, I was only 94, 95. I wouldn't have been looked at in college. Yeah. It's, it's like, you got to have so, so much of this edge, like you're saying, of numbers, analytics, whatever it may be, because... Everyone out there thought it was 100 now. To the, point, to the point where you say only 94, 95. For, the, for my, first, my first seven years of my career, I was probably top top 10 throwers in the league. Oh, yeah. For sure. And probably close to the top five. And I was probably averaging 90, 94 to 96 a game. Mm-hmm. And now that 94 to 96, you ain't even cracking no. top 20. Yeah. <laughs> you you, you got to be crafty at 94, 95 I now. do think it's going to come back, though. I think with the pitch clock and I think Guys not being able to just take their time to wind up the throw, the pitch absolutely as hard as they can every pitch. Um, I think some stamina, some stamina is going to have to come back. I absolutely. think velocity is going to drop. You know what I'm absolutely, saying? Yeah, like, I think so. What, what, what are your thoughts on the pitch clock, though, as being a current pitcher? I, I mean, I like it. No one wants to play four-and-a-half-hour games in, in nine hours, and that's kind of what baseball has done the last couple of years is um, you have you – have, Pitchers taking forever on the mound. You got hitters, you know, going through the routines in the box where everyone's coming out of the box and going through their whole breath and everything. And it's, um, no, I think I think it's a good thing to to try to speed up the game. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's gonna it's gonna cause the guys to get out of the routine. It's gonna, you know, some guys are gonna struggle to to adjust to it. Um, you know, I know I'm probably gonna be right on that edge of you know the 13, 14 seconds. I think they're gonna they're gonna put in there. So um, some of the other changes with I don't know. Have you seen all the mechanical like with radio the watch stuff, and stuff? The, yeah, yeah. The, 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 with the, the, the headphones and the in the in the hat. So I think that will help speed speed of the game. They're gonna oh, try. Oh, it's the headphones in the hat. Yeah, it's like it's a like football. The, the, yeah, it's basically <laughs> it's, the, like, it's the like a pitch call. The catcher hits a button mm-hmm. and, it, and it's a microphone in your hat. Oh, we you. lit. Yeah, so it's like, that. <laughs> so, we ain't gotta give a sign. Yeah, yeah I'm so good, it's, like, good. That's, it's gonna eliminate signs. Um, so uh, you know, once the catchers get you know quick about boom, you know, fat, you know, fastball location, you know, you can throw the pitch, and as you're walking back to the rubber, you're getting you you're getting the next sign. You get to sign your hat, so yeah. it should speed up the game you know, a lot as mm-hmm. far as that goes. And like I said, it's not gonna be more sign stealing. 
You're yeah. not going to be having to go, hey, second sign, shake, whatever. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have that anymore. So I think some of the changes that you know that we're going to see this year, I think, definitely will help you know speed up the pace of the game. That's awesome, man. I, I was always a guy that all, like I didn't want signs a lot anyway. Mm-hmm. So like the first hitter of every inning. I didn't want the catcher to put down signs. So we just mm-hmm. talked through the first hitter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he fouls off one, one, then we're going to go. Like, I didn't, like, let, let's just get through it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I was yeah. always, like, like four or five pitches ahead, Damn. especially if I got a chance to sit down in the dugout. So, I mean, hopefully guys will get back to that. And, you know, 94, 95, you know, for seven innings yeah. is a good thing. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Like, not a guy just winding up to, to absolutely throw the ball as hard as he can, make his best slider pitch, and then the hitter's, trying to get his best swing off every right, time. Right. So it's fucking a minute between every pitch. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Especially late in games. You can come seventh, eighth inning. Some of the relievers that they, they'd gotten real slow. And it's yeah. just like, man, it's you, you you could you could go in and have a, you know six innings an hour and a half and then the last three innings take yeah. two and a half hours. <laughs> With, you know, pitching changes and this and that. And it's just like so it hopefully hopefully what they're doing will speed up that, the pace a little bit. That clock gonna be interesting, bro. I got balled. I'm when I pitched out of when I the last three years, I pitched out of the minor leagues and they implemented all the rules. And I probably got balled by three times. <laughs> and didn't even know I got balled. And I look up like, man, it was 0-2. It's 1-2 now? It's like, man, all right, it's at least it's a free pitch I ain't got to throw. I ain't got to waste. So that they don't pitch. stop the game or nothing, they just ball. And they put a ball up there. I, got, I was like, yeah, man, they're probably screaming at me for ball. I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, nah, they gave you a ball. I'm like, it's 0 2. I don't care. They don't give a shit. I ain't wasting the pitch now. Fuck it, it's 0 2. No, go. when yeah. somebody walk on that shit, that's, no, that's when it's going to be a problem. That's, that's going to cost you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you walk in a run or some shit, then it's going to be a problem. See, the yeah. issue is the batters, sometimes they take long and they start that clock. So I'm like, hey, man, you started the clock. Yeah, and this dude, thing. this dude, he, 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 and then when the guy, when you come set, the clock stops, right? Like they yeah. turn the clock off. Is that like once the pitcher set? comes yeah. set, okay. then they stop. The, the, the I, turn I was, the clock I was off. curious how that was gonna work. Cause, yeah, cause, so cause, so that the hit, so that the runner won't know when you're getting right. down to have to yeah. throw the ball. Right, you're, you're long holding the guy at first base in three, two. two this, oh, he's good. This guy at first is landing. Like, yeah, that's an advantage for the runner. Okay, that's good. That's good. Once you come set, they stop it. That's good to know. But batters going if they don't do something with the batters, the batters will be trying to milk it. Like I'm gonna give it ten seconds to have to throw this. Pitch. I'm gonna act like I'm doing this dirt. Real Looking quick. at the catchers, yeah. they have to get a sign. All right, you got ten seconds out. They better have their sign, you know. But no, nah, it's gonna be interesting to watch, man, to see if that helps speed up the game. I I, I hope so. What about any of the other rule changes, like the guy on second base? You like that or um, CH the, the shift? Yeah. So the the, the sh- well, I'll start with the shift. The shift, like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I can go both ways on it, mm-hmm. just because it's it's I, it's I think it's kind of tough to. Be like, hey, it's second base. We're gonna put an X on the ground. You have to play right here. Right like, here, yeah. Like some of the things that you can get creative with is, if you got a big, the big donkey left hand up there, you know he's gonna pull it. Like, why can't we put guys over there? Yeah. Um, and I think I think originally they were kind of hoping some guys would kind of like work the barrel a little bit and shoot some stuff the other way, but um, no, they just start to hit the ball. But now they just try to. Now we'll just go over the shit. That's not a fucking so, good idea. <laughs> so, so, I, so I don't know how that, that how that's gonna work because. You know, everyone's like, oh, the strikeouts are up. But if you get a lefty in there now, knowing that there's not a shift over there, strikeouts may go up even more. Mm -hmm. Knowing that they don't have to worry about pulling into a shift, they're just going to keep pulling it. So now you might have keep throwing soft away, change up the way. These lefties, the strikeout numbers may go up. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, The the thing I'll be curious to see is, well, the runner at second, I'm a fan of. Mm -hmm. Just because... I was always the young guy in, in 2019. Going up and down. It, it's the 16th inning. It's like, hey, you got to keep going. You throw three innings, you come in the clubhouse, you're like, okay, where's Fuck. where's where's council? I know I'm going down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I know I got to go down because I'm the young guy. I just threw three innings. I'll yeah. see, you, see you in 14 days, you know. So I, I, I th- I'm a fan of that. That eliminates the 18-inning marathon yes. games and, and all the young guys having to be shuttled up and down, um, especially with the rule change if you can only be optioned five times in a year. So, you know, that, that would, that would kind of handcuff a, a manager of like, hey, we, could, we need arms. Yes. An 18 inning game, like, doesn't hurt you for the next day. It hurts you for a week. Yes. Oof. For the week, the Facts. 10 days after. Oh, that. man. Facts. Just yeah. the, the guys are just worn out, and you, you, you really need a starter then to go eight. Mm-hmm. And in today's game, not many guys are out there going. And a guy shouldn't anymore. get penalized for pitching three innings in an extra inning game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the guy that's, say, the, the, that's the hero shouldn't get penalized. Absolutely. For that. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. So, yes. Yeah, so, it, it, I'll be curious to see how, how some of these, these rule changes affect No, the I'm excited for the game, man. Like, we. we I was saying this earlier, like, our game is, like, so sacred to so many people that they hate mm-hmm. rule changes. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. the NBA and the NFL evolved so much, and that's why they kind of surpassed us a, a little bit because it's easier to watch. We need to make it, so you know, so fans are into it. Now, right. me being on the other side of it, 
you know, being a fan, I can, you know, kind of see some of the problems that are, you know, that I can see that fans don't like. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, because I sit there and watch a game, like, you got to watch three games at a time to see some yeah. action. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking 10 minutes before a, game, a ball gets put in play. <laughs> as much as I like going in there punching out 15 or 16 to start, like, like, I understand. Like, yeah, those those might take No, if those, I turn on the TV and I'm longer. watching you or DeGrom, I know what I'm getting. You know right. what I'm saying? But, like, if I'm watching the third starter for the Pirates, like, that guy shouldn't be striking out 15 guys. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Like, it, it right. should be... Should be a little and different. And he doing it with a hundred. <laughs> yeah, he doing it with a hundred. With a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Now you said something real quick that I, I just caught and I forgot that Craig Council's the the manager. How's yeah. it how's it playing for Council? I, you know, he's a teammate of mine, and he was an awesome teammate. I, I mean, how's it playing for him? He's awesome. He's he's the everyone talks about. Oh, he's the perfect players players coach, perfect players manager. But I mean, shit, he played in the game for so long. So and long. He, he he can relate to to everyone. Like mm-hmm. he does he doesn't just relate to position players. He's Playing the game for so long that he can relate to pitchers, knowing like what we're going through in in a season, and um, so he's he's cool. He's kind of changed how I think we've we've done spring training for so long. Everything was like, oh, spring training is so structured, this and that. But now, like spring training is is fun for us. Like we have every, every home game, we have individual days. Like you come in, like if you don't have a, a meeting that day, you come in, you play catch, you get your work done, like you're out of there. So yeah. it's nice. uh, one of those things. He's kind of he's kind of making it more spring training is more fun, yeah. more you know. Come in, get your work done, do what you need to do. You know, get out of here, kind of slowly work into baseball activities. So it's been good. And then as far as the, you know, the season goes, he's he's still he, I mean, he wants to win. He's, Gets he's, a red he's, ass. He's a winner. Wait, so, <laughs> yeah. oh, so bro, he get high. Yeah. Yeah. This bad dog, I love it. And he, like, he was even like that as a player. I pitched against him. I see. I probably I pitched against him, but I don't, I don't. I never played with him. Man, I remember the first time I did not get over to cover first base. And he he went off on my ass. Like, <laughs> in the dug, I was kind of like, what the fuck? Like, is Ned Yost the manager? Get the fuck over the cover the bag. Get the fuck over the cover the bag. Like, you throw throwing extra fucking pitches. Like, he was like going off. So I'm like, I mean, I started covering first base. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I won't do that again. I won't do that again. Nah, that's dope, man. That's dope. Every, every he time he pulls the ball, you're like, oh, shit, I got to go. Nah, it's cool that he's making. That's how spring training used to be. Like, when we first came up, as pitchers, if it was a home game, you come in, get your work in, and like we was on the golf course or yeah. doing whatever. So, nah, that's great to hear that uh, guys like playing for him, and you know he's yeah, uh, he's, he's, he's he's awesome, and he's he's got his, his bench coach uh, Pat Murphy. I mean, yes. I'm sure you heard all about Murph, and it's, <laughs> they're like the perfect complement to one another because counsel, you know, can be you know calm and. Calm and collected and kind of serious. Then you got Murphy coming in there and cracking jokes and, and keeping <laughs> things light. Give so a it's, damn. It's, it, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a good atmosphere in the clubhouse. I mean, How is it uh, being with Uke? Uke's awesome. You know, I've I've gotten to know Uke really good over the last you know the last couple of years. Um, and I mean, shit, Uke, Uke will do anything for you. He's, yeah. he's almost ninety years old now. But you have asked him to do something. He's like, yeah, I'm on. like, no, Uke, I'm kidding. Like, Uke, <laughs> I don't I don't, need, I don't want to kill you over here, but. Um, yeah, Uke's awesome. He's still every single day we're at home, comes in the clubhouse and has conversations with everyone and tells awesome. stories. And he's uh, yeah, he's he's one of those guys. It's 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 good good when you see him open the door and come in. That it's like, hey, I, I need to have a conversation with you. Home court. That's, food, right? that's the only sure. dude I hit on purpose that I felt bad for. It. And I had to the situation with you. <laughs> Bob, you uh, no, no. Oh, you. Oh, you talking, you talking about, about you? You talking about Uke? No, 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 no. Never mind. Never. You mind. talking about? Uke? I thought you were saying Euclid. So oh, no, 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 listen, no. I have, listen, I have not. Watch baseball. I've been disattached from baseball for the last <laughs> year. Wait a but I don't you, know what all moves. Was <laughs> Man, What's he, that story? We had to hit somebody. Um, they had hit Miguel. What team was you on? I was with Detroit. Okay. They, I, they hit Miguel. Cabrera kept getting hit. He kept getting hit. Kept getting hit. And Leland come through. I ain't saying you motherfuckers gonna hit somebody, but we keep getting our fucking guy hit. The next motherfucker that don't hit somebody, we're gonna have an issue. So you <laughs> said you will hit somebody? <laughs> I was like, all right, shit. This was the next day. I'm like, shit, all right. Pedroia got out, you came up, and I had to hit him. I hit him about 98 in the ribs. And he knew he was getting hit the whole stadium. I had to hit him. <laughs> and I hit him. He went to first. And that's when the next day he charged uh he charged um Portillo. I mean uh Porcello. Porcello. Oh, yeah, he, okay. charged, he charged he charged Por- Porcello. Did Porcello hit him too? He hit him by accident. Oh, but Yuke was probably still mad from when I hit him. And I told him, I was like, bro, my bad. He's like, man, I knew it was going to get hit. He's like, I couldn't breathe for a week. <laughs> but that's why I said, I didn't know. He, I thought he was saying he was over there coaching, man. Nah. Listen here, moves being made so fast, bro. I can't keep up. <laughs> I can't keep up. But nah, Yuke, Yuke, the OG. Yuke, funny. He got stories for days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The OG He's Yuke. awesome. Oh, yeah. Yuke. You know what's crazy is that, like, playing golf now, and we just kept, we we talked most of this pod about the mental side. 
Like, it's the same as pitching. Oh, absolutely. So I won't even, let like, let myself go there. You know what I'm saying? Like, in retirement, like, I don't take it that serious. Yeah. Because, like, you can get right back into, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, the, yeah. like mentally, like, just draining the shit out of you. <laughs> so, like, yeah, no, I'm trying to pick stuff that I'm, like, having fun with in yeah. retirement. You I know what I'm saying? saying? Like, I just ain't that good. I ain't yeah. that good to get mad. <laughs> I, get, I get mad at some shit I'm halfway good at. I ain't good at golf. I'm like, man, let's hear it. What the fuck I look like getting mad because I sliced it? I'm supposed to slice that shit. <laughs> Now you so we talking about uh you know off the field and stuff like what 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 are things that you like to do off the field I mean mentally I know you get to the park and you know you turn it on from twelve to whatever time you leave but got the four month I mean the four week old now yeah and, you so know that, that, that's, do those things take your you know your mind off the game yeah that's 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 a lot of it at home now um that that was actually part of what I I had to go through um after twenty nineteen is is I was taking baseball home like and I couldn't do it anymore like mm-hmm. it was. It was causing fights at home like it was it was like this can't happen so we, there's got to be ways that we can get away from that so that was um just it was picking a netflix show going home and, and sitting walking the door and hey let's watch some netflix like just something to get away from it so now now i feel i, I like playing golf mm-hmm. um I, I don't play as much as i used to but but golf's fun and um i'm, I'm big into fishing now nice oh, nice I, 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 I bought a boat this off season and so me and my wife shoot we were going out to the lake we live about 20 minutes from Lake Pleasant out in Peoria. So nice. we were on the lake three or four days a week. So that was that was kind of how we spent the off season. So that's kind of now I go home and I'm I'm watching fishing videos. And all <laughs> like, oh, shit, like, are you are you really gonna do anything besides watch fishing videos? Like, no, man, I need to catch more fish. It could be worse. Like, it could be worse. It could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's so dope. it's fun. It's yeah, fun. now having that distraction or you know pouring yourself into your family or mm-hmm. your kids or. Whatever hobby you have is the best way to get away from. I mean, we're we're at the field long enough. We're mm-hmm. spending 10, 11 hours at the field. You know, in season, you got what maybe a handful of off days that you actually yeah. don't have baseball activities. And even when you travel, you still get you know still right got going to play catch and, or do yeah, whatever. So, yeah. So there's the, the you got to have that, that that ability to get away from it. Wow. So that's that's kind of what I've been able to do the best and probably has helped baseball quite a bit. Yeah. We live a double life, man. People don't understand mm-hmm. it. When you play, you're an entertainer. You live a double life. You're a baseball player, and then when you leave the field, you whoever you are, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody's different. But that was the big thing for me. I had to disassociate myself or disattach myself from baseball. I always said, when I leave the field, I don't care if it was a good day or a bad day. When I leave the field, if I'm especially if I'm at home, On to whatever the, the fuck happened at the field, that shit yep. stay at the field. Because mm-hmm. yep. you come home, them kids, daddy, <laughs> yeah. just gave up 18 runs. They, they, don't, they don't know Man. and they don't care. Yep. That but was the put, biggest nope. thing is the kids. They don't yeah. give a fuck. You throw a no-hitter or you gave up 18. Like, you come home, it's dad's home. It's, you know what I'm saying? How you pitched today? Like, gave up 12. Okay, where we going? We going to the park? <laughs> yeah, they don't give a <laughs> shit. All right, go throw me BP. Like, yeah. I, just, I just did that. I just yeah. threw BP. <laughs> and you know what's crazy is some guys can deal with that and then some guys can't. I remember Jeep, me and Derek used to always talk about, he's like, how do you like have kids and play I'm like that like that's the only reason i can play right because i would be taking this shit home and i would be right. like i would i mean my hair would have fell out when i was fucking 20 if mm-hmm. i you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. the way you think about this game and stress out like and some guys can do that you know yeah. some guys don't can't be have a family they need structure they need right. you know to be so serious about the game yeah. to get everything out of it but for me it's just trying to take my mind off it as much as mm-hmm. I, as much as i possibly can, be can because when i'm in it I'm fucking in it. Yeah. And I'm trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a fuck who up there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to win. I'm against whoever, whatever. I'm going to give you all I got for those couple hours. But when I'm away from it, I'm I'm away from it. You know what I'm saying? You have to, man. You have to. It'll eat you you alive if you don't. The game will eat you alive. That's why I'm excited. Like, now that I got got my son, it's like, it's almost like I had this first half of my career. It's like, it was just me and me and my wife. Now it's like, hey, I'm bringing my son into this now. Like, it's, it's, you look at it completely different. Like Mm -hmm. you say, it's like, come home you got kids now you, you got to teach this game to your kids and ha, i mean he's gonna grow up in the clubhouse he's gonna be around to it all. yeah so it's like he's he's gonna want to play baseball as much as you try to steer him away from it whatever like they're, they're around baseball they're gonna want to yeah. play baseball so it's like now it's like i gotta be that that guy on tv that i'm not up there throwing f-bombs and doing this and <laughs> kicking the dirt and like he's gonna watch this someday so i gotta yeah. i gotta be not only a role model at home is yeah. on the field on the field everyone's too. watching it yeah. that glove over your mouth like my grandma said <laughs> right. my grandma she's like boy did you just say what i thought you said on tv <laughs> so i probably did grandma from that day on my glove was on my she knew i was cussing but she didn't know what i was saying <laughs> man i'm just thinking about the clubhouse when we was in milwaukee the kids like Jaden fielder he's going to famu dad's camera was in there he's plays for center field for the tigers like 
these kids that get a chance to grow up around the game and like count his son. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like these kids yeah. that grow up around the game, they just have an advantage and their mind thinks differently, you right. know, when they get a chance to see it that young. So now nah, I'm excited for you, man. I think, you know, everything that you've been doing on and off the field is going to set you up for just the longest career, you know, possible. So uh, thank you for coming on. And Appreciate it. We're definitely going to be watching you every step of the way. Yeah, thank you guys. Hopefully I can have half as long a career you guys Shit. have. You keep, you keep doing what you're Shit. doing, you're going to make our career look like nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, be, you be up in here with this dude over here, bro. That's, that's the goal. No, nah, that's dope. It's fun to watch, though, man. It's a pleasure, for sure. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, guys.